What is going on guys? Thank you for joining us and welcome to the Weekly Football Manager Show. If you are joining us on YouTube, you will know that this is the second one this week, but this is the main one of the week. So people on iTunes and SoundCloud, good evening for this week. It is myself and it is Colin. Thank you for joining us, Colin. No problem. How's it going? Fantastic. Very well on this um, Sunday evening we are recording this. Um, so the what we're going to do tonight is we're going to talk about FM16 features and we're going to have a look into our personal saves, Colin, and then we're going to have a little bit of talk about tactical movement, basically discussing how we set up for specific specific things, what we're doing currently in our saves, actually, which works out perfect to talk about. Um, so the FM16 features, Colin. Yep, so we got a couple of new features that have been rolling on uh, for the last week or so here. So the first one is having players who don't speak the language where you're, uh, where, where you're managing having intensive language courses before they get there so that they at least have a basic understanding of the language so that they can function in the team. Um, kind, of an interesting, kind of an interesting add-on, and at least hopefully it gets rid of the you know, season-long you know, bumbling that you end up with with players when they don't speak and they can't communicate and you need to go and find three other guys on the squad that can speak both languages so that they feel like they fit in and you end up with decent team cohesion. I think, um, yeah, I think it's a, a, good, a good feature. I think it's um, something which can be used. I am curious if you're in um, the law leagues, obviously, if you turn professional in the conference, for example, if you mentioned in England, um, is it going to cost money? And if it does, how much? Is it is it only going to be a few hundred pounds or is it going to be thousands, which can then obviously leave you in, in the situation where you've got to decide, is it worth doing it? Is this player coming in as a backup so he could technically learn the language whilst he's sitting on the bench? Um, it's a tough decision, Colin, but it's definitely a great feature to bring in. It's going to give you something else to think about. Yeah, no, I think it'll be interesting. And it, yeah, like you said, it's a different tool to play around with that could have a definite impact on um, how you approach signings, how they come in, and you know, and how it works across the different leagues will be a really interesting one uh, to, to figure out. Um, so the next feature is team sharing. Um, so your ability to share your team with different players. Um, probably bigger for the multiplayer community. Um, so... Yeah, I'm not sure from my perspective how big I am into it since I don't multiplayer the game very much. I think um I think what it is Colin is since uh, when um when we discuss in your save or we discuss in let let's say you've just won the MLS and you are delighted you won the MLS, it's took you a couple of years, you managed to bring in some big names from European football, you've brought them into the MLS and you want to share your team. You can now share on FM Central, our Facebook group, this screen, which looks a lot more tidy than, for example, your squad screen where you have all your personal stat layout. You know, you customise your squad screen, don't you, for your yeah. personal use. Right. Um, instead of that, you have a very nice pitch view with some information on the side, which I think looks nice and clear, Colin. So if you are sharing... Um, that you've just won a trophy and people ask to see your squad, you get to show them a clear view of your squad without any of the odd little bits which you have on the screen. For example, I have all the key passes, key interceptions, etc. And people don't want to see a screen full of that, so they squint in at the um, at the player who they want to see. I mean, so I quite like that feature again, Colin. It's again adding them little things, isn't it, which are going to improve the game. Yeah, no, that would yeah, that would be an interesting one to kind of clean things up, especially since a lot of us, you know, with the shows and things like that, you know, we do we do talk a lot about saves, so it would it would be nice to have an easier way to show um, show squads in that sense. Definitely. Um, next feature, so there's a whole bunch going on in injury revamp, and this is the addition of the injury release clause to contracts. Um, I'm interested on this one. I, I'm curious how it'll work. Um, how it kicks in, length of injury that can activate it, um, those sort of things. But I think it, you know, injuries as as everyone who who plays and has watched it, watched um, you know FF sixteen, you know, be it on YouTube or whatnot. There's lots and lots of people complaining about how the injury mechanic has worked or or not worked uh, in this save. So I think this is another one of those good moves towards improving that one to. Uh, to try and smooth, smooth things out a bit. I think um, what I will say is we've got a training guide on our website, which has been a very, very popular popular post on um, on Football Manager 2015. So if you go to footballmanagercentral.com and just search training, um, you can find the training post. And it's um, 
a lot of people have the issue, Colin, with training football manager where they will set, for example, a medium or a high training on fitness, on ball control, on tactics, um, for example. And then they will go into the individual and they will then get their individual training on passing, on technique, on specific roles like deep line forward, um, Regista, for example. And then what they end up doing is they end up working the player too hard and then the player's playing two matches during the week. They've not set up a rest after the match. They've not set up a rest before the match. They've ended up pushing them too hard. And injuries happen. They're playing players who are only 50% match fit. And they've also got them working very hard on the training field. All of this comes into the training. All of this comes into fitness. And all of it comes into injuries. And um, I see over 10 to 20 posts a week on Facebook, on FM Central. And all of them all point back to not a lack of knowledge because the people who post it are very knowledgeable football manager players. But a lot of the time, which I personally do myself, Colin, is when you get into a save, currently I'm in good form. So you end up just kind of going through an autopilot because your, your team's playing well, you're mid-season, you're playing how they want, they line up how they want. And then you get an injury. And then the next game you get another injury. Then you get another injury and you think, what's going on? Then you realise you've maybe not tweaked something in the training, that you're not resting the people how you maybe should need the midpoint of a season. Around Christmas, for example, Colin, in England, there's more fixtures. It, um, it, it all counts and all adds up to injuries. Um, but I do think this is a great feature. Um, especially What I wanted to ask you, Colin, is do you think it's going to be set for contract length? So if a player misses more than 50% of the remaining contract. So if he has a year left on his contract and he gets a eight-month injury, do you think that's how it's going to come into effect? I, I hope, you know, I at least hope that there's some kind of a duration because, you know, I don't want necessarily somebody to have an injury release cause activated for, you know, like a two-week, you know, yeah. injury. That, that, would, that would annoy the hell out of me. But yeah, if it's one of those where if it's, you know, some percentage of games missed through injury. You know, if you're a key player and you miss more than 50% of games, you know, something like that. Or if it's an injury over, you know, six months or three months or something like that, I think that would make plenty of sense to me. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the uh, how the whole mechanic fits together. Definitely. Good feature. Definitely a good feature to add in. Yes, very much so. Uh, and then the last one we wanted to talk about was the imp- the the change in competition confidence ahead of kickoff. So, um, you know, as they're adding more dynamicism to the game, it looks like competition confidence is another, uh, you know, an expectation is another element that's changing uh, along the way. Uh, which which is interesting because if the team's got a better run of form, you know, having higher expectations because. Um, because the team's performing better is would be something you know sort of the way it really works, and I think it'll get rid of the cheat that I know a lot of people sort of take in is is if you go in there and you make sure you fight with the board to get everything set to the lowest possible expectations, and then you overperform, it makes it easier to keep your job safe. Um, so it'll be nice to have a little more uh, dynamicism to that. Yeah, I think um, I am personally quite quite happy, but also very intrigued. Because the screenshot that was posted on Twitter by um, at Football Manager, it wasn't it wasn't overly clear, Colin, because they said it um, before a must win five thirty kickoff. Um, there's more pre match um, board confidence, and what it, the screenshot showed was Portsmouth's expectation was not to be outclassed in the Capital One Cup, and um, below it said um, competition update reserve and judgment. Um, so does that mean if they lose the game five nil, the board's going to be really disappointed? Because um, what I would say is, I don't know about yourself, Colin, but they don't judge before the kickoff anyway. It's not like you're down at ten percent before the kickoff. It is all judged after the kickoff anyway. So pre-match um, judgment of saying the reserve judgment literally means nothing. Yeah, I I do wonder if it points to to more dynamics going on through the game. Um, yeah, I'm I'm definitely sort of curious to know what's going to say. Yeah, um, because the 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 screenshot they've put to an extent didn't make any sense. Um, the screenshot, what they say has been added 
it sounds like a really good feature, but along with the screenshot I saw, it just kind of confused me a little bit, Colin. So I'm really curious to see exactly what it's going to do. Very much so. Um, but we're going to talk about our personal saves and kind of, kind of Ben twist them together with um, the tactical discussion. Um, I'll ju- I'll go first, Colin. And what I'm just going to say is, um, people who haven't followed on FM Central on Facebook, I started with um, Saint Mirren. Um, in the Scottish Championship. Um, first season, I won the Scottish Cup, didn't get promoted. Second season, I got promoted and won the Training Cup. Third season, I won the SPL, so I won back to, back-to-back t- titles. And then in the fourth season, I won the League Cup, so I ended up with every single trophy available. Um, I then left at the end of the season due to the board basically accepting deals behind my back for a few players. Um I went to Belgium and managed the national team because they'd just been knocked out of the World Cup at this point. Um, I stayed for the National League and we didn't get out the group. We finished runners-up to France on seven points. France had eight. Um, And then Norwich came in for me in the Premier League. So I thought, you know what, I'll give it a go. Went to Norwich around Christmas time and I stayed for a couple of months. Then I was I wasn't settled, Colin. I was talking to you at the time about that. I just didn't feel didn't feel any love for the save at that point. Right. Um then Celtic, Glasgow Celtic came in for me. Um and it was it was something I couldn't turn down. Um obviously I'd had success in Scotland with St. Mirren. So the chance to go back to Scotland. Celtic were just behind Rangers in the in the league. Um and the season finished as it as it was when I joined just behind Rangers. So I'm now into my fifth, sorry, my sixth season on the game, um, my first full season with Celtic. And I'm trying to kind of build something, Colin, with them, which I kind of had at um, St. Mirren. Now, we discussed this in the past, how um, at St. Mirren, my main aim was a counter-attack, quick-paced football. Now, this is where a lot of people, I think, struggle is setting this type of football up, Colin. Um hmm. Now, obviously, you don't want to be playing only 30-40% possession. You want to control the game, but you also want to be effective in terms of not dilly-dallying on the ball. You don't play like Barcelona. Um, so, I tried to set it up with pace. Now, every single season with St. Mirren, my, my wingers had a minimum of 15 or 16 pace. Normally, it was close to 17, stroke 18. So, over the summer with Celtic, I did the same thing. If you want to play counter-attack in football, your wingers have to have pace. Um, and in the team instructions, one of the key things is clear ball to flanks, flanks or maybe someone called Frank, and um, <laughs> run at defence. Now, running at defence prevents quick distribution from your wingers. Now, also, what I set for my wingers is cross the ball from the byline. Now, that, again, along with run ball, run at defence... That prevents them just getting the ball and getting rid of it. I'm utilising what I signed them for, which is pace. So my defenders are now at Celtic. I'm trying to get them set up as ball-playing defenders. Um, again, people who followed it will know Naismith and Kelly from um, St Mirren. They they are now with me at Celtic um, in my defence. So I'm trying to get my defence to play with the ball a bit, come out with it, then distribute. Because the idea of that is you you want ball playing defenders when you're playing counter attack football because they get the ball um, and straight away Colin the, the opposition's midfield push onto them because they've got the ball so the striker of the opposition can't chase down the whole defence on his own so the midfield has to push up as soon as they push up we then distribute to the flanks and the wingers are away and before you know it the opposition can't double up on the wing and they can't get the midfield across to to try to double up either. So you end up catching the opposition off guard. And currently at Celtic, I've got a striker who has 17 for acceleration and 16 for pace. I just checked before we come on, Colin. Um, And again, with having the wingers with pace and and the striker with pace and having the ball playing defenders, I'm finding it's so so quick and so effective for just um as i say the i distribute goalkeeper distributions to the center backs they get the ball they will straight away pass to each other colin because the ball playing defenders that as soon as the second pass is made that is a trigger for the opposition to push forward 
as soon as they push forward, that's a trigger to play the ball out wide to the flank. And then we, we're we gone. Um, my central midfield, currently I'm playing two in the middle and one just in front. Now what I'm finding is that I've set the one in the middle in the attack midfield of all. I can't, I can't pronounce it. Egg, 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 what is it, Colin? Help. The Engage. That's it. I've got him set as that. That's um, currently Jack Wilshire, actually. Um, now the idea of that is he's pretty obsolete because I'm getting down the flanks and then crossing it in and he's not a tall Marion Fellaini type player otherwise I would set him as a shallow striker because because my wingers are getting down to the byline he can cross it in Colin and he would be able to win it but because I don't have that tall player he's kind of just told to run around if the winger can't get a ball in he's normally there to assist um and then my two central midfielders, they're both decent at tackling. They both have 17 or above for passing. Because the idea of that, again, is the ball-playing defenders, they'll quite often distribute to the flank. The winger might knock it to one of my midfielders. Then he will go for the 1-2. Um, I find that happens quite a lot. You, you physically can't prevent your winger from passing the ball to the central midfielder. Um, no matter what you do, he will do it. So you might as well utilise it. And because of my tactic, my central midfields don't have to have a lot of pace, so it's literally all focusing on first touch, passing, and technique, and kind of vision. And vision's always always important for your midfielders. But um, yeah, I hope that's been a little bit insight inside of Colin of what I'm doing. A little bit of an insight. Yeah. Um, but now we're going to go on to the other end of the scale, Colin. You are playing at the bottom of the ladder and you are developing a very decent very well very hard working very solid tactic yeah so i started out in the vanarama south at bishop stortford and um the goal was is you know we want to kind of promote our way out and and kind of get our way all the way up um the ladder since i i hadn't done that in a save in fm15 um i spent a couple of years there i had a couple of really good youth intakes um I, I, the team, you know, the squad had always been sort of, you know, please don't get relegated. And we were finishing, you know, mid table. I think I finished 14th, my first season, ninth, the second season. Um, and then I got caught into that sort of expectations and money don't line up. Um, I had the club making money, so money was coming, but probably not as fast as the expectations were riding. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they wanted a promotion playoff on the lowest, you know, wage bill in in the conference south. Um, so I had gotten sacked out of that because I just wasn't wasn't able to 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 get a team to play over its head that much. Um, so I ended up I landed at White Hawk. Um, they were in 14th at the time, and it was you know we want to be in the playoffs. Um, so I had set up so the team is a was a better structured, better put together squad. Um, so I had set up, you know, a mixture of tactics. Um, we got into the playoffs in the first uh, that first season, but but lost in the final and missed out on promotion. So in the last season, I said, you know what, we're going after this one. We're gonna, you know, we're, we're gonna play the old school style of if you can score more than me, you earned your victory today. Um, so again, similar to what you were doing. So I set up very much, uh, a get the ball moving forward and attack style tactic. But the second piece of it was, is once we're attacking to compress the field into the opponent's half, um, so that, you know, if we lose it, the field is very compressed and we can quickly recycle back in. Um, so similar how you said, I've got, um, I've got some high speed on the wings. Um, I do play with one winger and one inside forward um, with the poacher. So what happens is uh, a lot of the time we get the ball down uh, in, in my tactics case, it happens to be the left flank where the winger is. He screams down the side and looks for crossing opportunities as efficiently and, and quickly as he can. And then, you know, between my attacking, you know, sort of my advanced playmaker who, who makes runs um, as well as the poacher and the inside forward, I've got three guys making runs in the box, which greatly outnumbers, you know, the opponent's defenders. And usually there's somebody there to, to, to smash one home. If not, somebody gets in and, you know, one of their defenders gets a header in the way of it. I have my, my two central midfielders 
who are supporting and coming up behind it, who are able to win the ball back, you know, at the top of the box, you know, 20 yards, that 20 to 30 yard range from, from the goal. And then now they can start playing it in. And now I've got plenty of guys in plenty of places. And then my back four um, will start pushing up. I have um, very attacking fullbacks as well. So then I've got multiple guys out on the wide, you know, out playing wide, stretching the field, pulling a lot of width. And I have a lot of room for my guys inside the box um, to play. And, you know, they the net result is I end up with a lot of, you know, trying to work the ball in the middle. That doesn't work sometimes. It gets pushed out to the side. You stretch the opposition defense. They get pulled out to try and react to the ball going to the flank. You get a cross in and boom, you score. I think last Last season, I scored 94. I had a plus 32 goal differential. I scored 94. Um, you know, we were averaging two and change goals a game. Uh, I think I was averaging four a game at home. Um, so my road my road form is really where we're spending a lot of time this season because that's where I've sort of paid the price um, a lot is I just haven't been able to, to go out on the road and score. Um, but overall, I think, you know, for for a lower league side, you know, where you have guys that you're looking at 16, 17, 18 pace acceleration out on the wings, right? You're not really finding much of that in the low leagues. And if you do find a guy with that kind of speed, that's all he's got. Um, so most of my guys are down a little lower, you know, 12, 13, um, you know, speed pace acceleration, but I'm looking for decent crossing, shooting and dribbling skills, you know, as trying to maximize as best I can. Um, but I think the other key to the whole conversation is, once you identify the system, the tactic, and how you want to play, it becomes so much easier to recruit players for it because you know exactly the type of person, you know, you know what stats are important, what aren't, and how you want them to plug into the entire system, which makes a huge difference in the off season, uh, at least for me. Definitely. I think um, I think one thing to look at, Colin, it's it's definitely different for every team. But um, I'd love to know your thought. My idea is I've got a tactic. Uh, well, currently, obviously, I'm kind of trying to tweak a little bit. But I've got a tactic which I I have a, a base for in my head, um, and I'm signing players to fit that tactic. Now. I would always say to do that, but then you've got to look at the clubs like Real Madrid, and for example, you've got Gareth Bale, you've got Ronaldo. Um, you're going to want to kind of not build a team around them, but you want to try to input them in their best positions. Um, so you can't always do it, but I'd definitely recommend kind of going in, quick look at the team, build a, t- build a tactic around your best four or five players, then kind of tweak it as you go along and kind of just see what you can come up with. I mean, I... I built my whole tactic from, the, it's the exact same tactic I started at on day one at St. Mirren. And the reason I came up with this tactic was I had Kelly and Naismith, who were both fullbacks, but had very good central defender stats. So my plan was, right, I want to re- retrain them as ball playing defenders. And I got uh, Powell from MK Dons and Aaron's from Newcastle on loan. Now, that was all done within the first couple of days of the save. As soon as I got that done, Colin, I just kind of looked and went, wang, I've got loads of pace there. I've got these people who I really want to train as ball-playing defenders. And I had a central midfield in Mallon, who is also with me at Celtic now. Um, I've got six former St. Mervyn players with me. Um, so it shows, Colin, as well, if you build up relations, you can actually bring them players with you. Um but yeah, that Mallon, he's not a pacey player, he's not like a work, he's, well he's a workhorse, but he's, he's definitely a sit in the middle and kind of control the game type of player. So that, that's, as I was saying, build a team around what you have. I got in them pacey wingers because I needed some wide men and it just turned out that they were literally ridiculously fast. So straight away, I looked right, ball playing defenders, wingers, a central midfielder who's just good to literally get the ball, get rid of it. Definitely going to be playing this ball, playing counter attack, clear the ball, the flanks football. Yeah, I think so. The way I like to approach a lot of it is, I agree. I think when you get there, um, figure out the best of what you've got, and then build around it. Um, this save and where I've gotten to now is, I've I've had an idea. Of, I started trying to play with thing, you know, tactically with things that I hadn't played around with much before, um, just to just to see how things had worked. Um, 
and the idea I'm playing with right now is I very much so, and, and I think you and I were talking a little bit about it the other night, I was so annoyed at missing out uh, in the playoff final that um, the mission became, I'm just going to shove the ball down your throat. And if you can beat me, you, you know, you're going to need to put five in the net to beat me. Um, and that's very much been the tactical philosophy that, that I've been playing with. Um, that being said, it's punishing me a little on the road and I have to augment it to manage it a little bit on the road, but at least for home and against weaker sides, that's, that is very much so the mode mission system and viewpoint of, uh, you know, of my squad is we're, we're coming to get you. We're going to put a lot of pressure on you. We're going to, we're going to score goals. Um, and I think there was, you know, of the 45 or so, you know, 48 games, whatever we played in the last season, I think there were only, you know, there were less than five times I got clean sheeted in the whole thing. We, we knocked the goals <laughs> in. I think, um, I'm getting a nervous twitch listen to that Colin. Um, <laughs> I mean, people, who, if, if you are new, if you're listening on iTunes, if you're listening on SoundCloud or on YouTube and you've just found us, you will actually see that um, people will, if you listen back to previous shows, you will know that um, during this year I created the 5-5 five and five tactic, which is all about proving that in Football Manager you can keep clean sheets. Um, <laughs> and obviously I kept 50, 52, I think it's a long time now, it's a few months ago, I think it was 52 clean sheets in the two seasons. Um yeah. I would actually love to to do a one season challenge in the conference and just see how few goals I could concede in a season. Um, but it, it's I think it's going to be too close to the release of FM sixteen to attempt that. Maybe in FM sixteen I can do that just for a little yeah. challenge to see if um, defending and success can be achieved in the conference because I think um, you're definitely doing the right method because the amount of people you see on. FM Central on Facebook when they post when they're in the low leagues they always concede a shed load it seems like it's just the norm um, so I think the fact you've kind of just held Jans up and said I'm probably going to concede a lot but I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to put five past you uh, um, I think it's a, it's a great method and I'll tell you what it's a lot more entertaining oh it makes it a lot more fun it, it makes it a lot more fun although at times it can get a little nerve wracking indeed, um, indeed. <laughs> when you're playing but yeah I think you know, it, it's very difficult, especially at the at, at this you know this particular level where you're looking for, you know, like you, you know at, at Celtic, right? You've got a good, strong base with, you know, ball playing defenders with good intelligence who are smart enough to know that they can play back and forth to draw the opposition in and then spring the trap, right? In yeah, the lower yeah. leagues, you're not getting that. The the guys aren't going to have that skill, and you're going to be opened up with a lot of mistakes and things like that at that level. So you need to keep, you need to keep a lot of the elements a lot simpler and more straightforward. Um, so, you know, we have some of the same similar elements, but yeah, they're just, they're just pieces of it where it isn't going to happen. There's no way it's going to happen. I couldn't make the team do it if I wanted to. So in that case, we're going to go pedal in the metal. I am genuinely excited for FM 16 now because I'm going to, set up um my first youtube series and i'm determined to show you colin it can happen now <laughs> <laughs> um but that's the end of tonight's show i thoroughly enjoyed this um this tactical discussion colin oh absolutely um, oh it's down talking this so i hope people enjoyed it i hope you tune back in next week um myself and colin will be with you for the long haul because it is myself and colin who are doing our weekly shows on youtube um doing our daily uploads daily series colin and myself so something to look forward to i want to thank everyone who's tuned in i hope you have a a nice week and remember to join us for next week when we will be doing another weekly football manager show